Dice Towers are battling Dice Towers in this dexterific episode of Little Big Thumbs. Welcome to Little Big Thumbs, a channel that's all about finding games that are equally fun for little players and big players. My name is JP, and the game we're talking about today is called Towers. This is a fantasy-themed game of gathering cards and resources with the goal of being the first player to gather five crowns. But none of that matters, because what this game is really all about are these crazy cool dice tower miniatures. Can we really call them miniatures? These things are towering over everything else on the table, like kaiju preparing to throw down. And speaking of throwing down, these things are engineered to spit out dice onto the board, like Carlito spitting apples at people who don't want to be cool. And if you're looking at this game with kids in mind, and if you're watching Little Big Thumbs, I imagine that might be part of the reason why you're here, there is obviously a serious toy factor in play here. One of the ways we can score crowns in Towers is by spitting out a die onto the board and having it collide with another dice tower. Heck, there are even trick shot rules included in case you can manage to hit two opposing towers with one die. The game itself is all about collecting quest cards, which can be resolved at the end of a turn, deciding whether to use our dice to collect resources off of the map, spending those resources to acquire dice, moving and attacking with our giant dice towers, with that ultimate goal of getting five crowns, which will win us the game. We're not going to be doing a full overview of how to play this game. I think the publisher and many other creators are going to be covering those bases. So we're going to jump right to the big question in this video. And that is whether this game is going to be right for you. If you're not swayed by the immense toy factor of Ta Wars, and the chaos factor of the dice doesn't necessarily appeal to you, and let's be clear, dice are driving almost everything in this game, from resource collection to the actual attacks that happen on the board. If you already know that chaos and, and dice manipulation are not your thing, then you already know that this game is probably not going to be for you. But if you're curious to know our thoughts after several plays of Ta Wars, then keep on watching. <laughs> For us, there are two important questions to answer with this game. Number one, is Ta Wars a one-trick pony? Are these giant Godzilla-sized dice tower fortresses just a gimmick, or is there some meat on these dense plasticky bones? And the answer to that question depends entirely on what you look for in a game. Ta Wars is ultimately a light strategy affair, and it's probably not going to appeal to the heaviest of gamers. Despite the rich fantasy setting of the box artwork, it's got casual appeal and just enough meaningful decisions to keep many hobby-focused board gamers engaged, and a faux dexterity element that can be a lot of fun. But if you are looking for that three to four hour really chunky dudes on a map experience, this is not that game. And I say faux dexterity because the actual firing of the dice doesn't really require any skill. We can try to put a little spin on the die as we're dropping it into the towers, or maybe create a little bit more velocity. But aside from pointing where the mouth of the tower is facing, we don't really have a little control over the dice delivery mechanism. And that's not a knock on the game, that's just a fact of how this product works. And our second question today is specific to Little Big Thumbs, and that's asking, how does this game play with children? At the time of this recording, my kids are six and eight years old, and despite all of my attempts to explain the game structure to them, they ultimately just wanted to play with the dice towers and try to make cool things happen with them. For my kids specifically, I think we're still a few years away from really being able to enjoy this game as intended in the rulebook. So if we're judging this specifically as a game for children, we're probably recommending it for ages 10 and up versus younger children like my own. However, if you are willing to be flexible with the rules and create an experience for kids that solely focuses on that rock'em sock'em aspect of the game, there is a lot of fun to be had here. In fact, I would implore the creators of this game to cook up some junior rules to maybe put on the back of their rulebook or downloadable from their website. Because the toy factor here is so off the charts that for younger children, it's often hard to look past that towering aspect of Ta War. So why not just lean into it? To wrap things up today, I'll simply say this. 
If you're looking for a casual battle game with a whimsically unique battle mechanism, you should definitely take a peek at Ta Wars. It's not going to be for everyone, but for the right players, there is a lot of fun to be had here. So that's it for today. So thank you to the creators of Ta Wars for letting us borrow their prototype copy of the game. And as always, thank all of you for watching. We'll be back again soon. And until next time, whether you've got little players or big players, make sure that you keep playing games that make your thumbs go way up. Bye for now.